what brings you to California? So I had this notion that Germany has like very good for mechanical engineering. Why did you come to US? Like the immigration is tough. It's very costly. My primary motivation to come to the US was money. American dream, huh? What was the trigger point for you when you decided to pursue your masters from some of our countries like US? I like the work culture more where I'm working currently. It's very cliche. Uh, uh, no, I don't think on anything. So let's tell the audience the truth. Why I'm here? Like honestly, I'm here. <laughs> to pick up your car to take it from california to new york for vinayak and honestly there are two reasons why i'm here one is that i really love california i've been here for eight nine months and second is i really love driving so driving from coast to coast is what brought me here are you excited for the cross country drive definitely really looking forward to it so just to give you all an perspective like mayur's last attempt we are still waiting for that whether his hnb would be picked or not so we are at the crossroads like whether he will be in us or not in us and all that stuff so this interesting to, times yes just to start like i want to know what's the typical immigration process like for a student like how does the visa start like which visa you are on i was working on f1 opt okay stem opt um just to give like general idea about visa when you come as a student you come on f1 cpt visa mm mm-hmm. uh until you graduate it's f1 cpt you can do internships on cpt uh f1 cpt uh once you graduate it's f1 opt okay. cpt is curriculum practical training opt is optional practical training mm-hmm. like you working after your masters is optional okay. that's how you come and it's typically for 3 years mm-hmm. i think it's divided into opt and then stem opt, STEM OPT. if you are a student from stem then you get uh, extension um so now i'm currently on my f1 stem opt okay um and i'm applying for my h1b visa which is basically the work visa the trickiest part of h1b visa it's a random selection also called as lottery uh, okay. based system mm-hmm. uh, so there are pool of candidates one is general candidates and one is like masters cap okay. um and uh, from this both categories uh, the selection that is done is completely random that makes the us visa process uh, tricky mm-hmm. uh, there is lot after uh, h1b um uh, we are not getting into that today there is something called i140 approvals there is something called perm process there is something called green card process mm-hmm. this is the these are some of the milestone that follow when when we talk about us immigration got it so this is something about the visa and how it works in us now let's go back to start and go go a few years back to to your bachelor's experience in india can you explain the audience in brief and what were some of the biggest learnings for you uh, my biggest learning from my bachelor's um i did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering back in pune university mm-hmm. um and uh some of my biggest learnings are i think i learned a lot while uh participating in robotics events like building uh, some small bots for robo races um uh for 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 robots for 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 robots to perform some tasks mm-hmm. uh i went to different colleges um participated in uh, some events in iit bombay i think this traveling and learning experience was really good for me mm-hmm. knowing going talking to people competing learning you know the entire journey taught me a lot um i uh in my bachelor's in some of my basic uh, mechanical engineering subject um i uh really liked some of the professors um um like engineering graphics we had a professor called arunoday kumar who also happened to write the book during like one of the textbooks and he was very influential he taught us engineering graphics without we drawing or we we drawing anything in his class That's it was right. just listening and just visualizing wow. that was very interesting as in like a student from first year engineering fe mm-hmm. um apart from this i also happened to be the general secretary in my final year this gave me a good exposure to like uh, the interpersonal skills um and uh talking to people being around like staff members organizing events uh and so on and um uh, uh i think i learned a little bit on that end so these were some of the key learnings apart from the academics that you learn and the mm-hmm. projects that you do etc i did my final year project in industry which gave me some insights into how like you know a medium scale company would operate um they used to make uh, some uh, automation or special purpose machines mm-hmm. for some welding processes basically 
So yeah, this was my bachelor's, uh, so to say. Experience, yeah. yeah. You had a great experience, it seems, because for me, I didn't focus much on the extracurricular things. Like mostly, it was about academic because I had a lot of travel, like two hours of travel from my home to college. So it was just about attending lectures, going back, eating, sleeping, and repeating. So really good nice. to hear you developed a lot, whether it's academically, also interpersonal skills, like talking to people, being a general secretary, and so on. Yeah, even my experience was similar. I th I think my college was an hour, uh, like one and a half hour away. Oh. I've traveled to my college with all modes of transport, <laughs> like college bus, like from the local train, uh, uh, with my own bike, uh, I think, and like some other small patches here and there. Got it. But like, yeah, it was it was sl slightly far for me as well, which was like draining in terms mm -hmm. of energy. Uh, yeah. But, but in short, this means that Mayur was more dedicated than me, like if we had the same situation, but still you focused more on that. So that's a good thing. Uh, now I want to know, like, how was your transition from your bachelor's to working, starting full time in India? Can you transition some light? Yes. Um, the, the transition was, I think, uh, it, 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 it involved a lot of learnings, I think. Mm -hmm. um, as a student, there were a lot of things which, um, which I was not like sure about how it works in corporate life, uh, especially the corporate lingo, uh, you know, how to write like formal emails, how to be in like a very, uh, let's say, you know, in a, in a, in an operational environment, um, how does it work and so on. Um, I, so that was like a very, very good, uh, learning from me. There were a lot of like, how to say like cultural shocks, like corporate cultural shocks that I had, uh, in terms of, um, uh, how do you communicate a specific thing uh, mm -hmm. in a professional environment? Uh, not to say that it was also like Indian work environment and um, uh, work environment in production is different in a manufacturing typical company is different compared mm -hmm. to any corporate like uh, environment, let's say, which is in a typically office setting. Okay. Um, I learned a lot about like etiquettes. Uh, YouTube videos were my to go, like, you know, to go option or like friend and uh, I think I tried to watch videos for as many things as possible. Wow. May it be like uh, anything and everything. Yeah. YouTube is a great source. Like you can almost find solution to every answers, every questions that you have. So that's a good source. Yeah, it, it was it was really interesting. Uh, yeah, these were I think some of my key learn key things when I transitioned from uh, bachelor's to my master's. I got like campus placed. Okay. Um, and. Uh, Initially, I was like GET, mm -hmm. uh, like graduate engineer trainee, and uh, I was rotated in different departments. So this transition involved me working in production environment and actually near machines, mm -hmm. gathering some data, solving like the actual problems that they have, dealing with uh, operators or people who are working in that manufacturing setup from like uh, three decades, four decades, yeah. um, and trying to solve a problem which they have seen from yours. So uh, I was like kind of... Uh, learning through struggling um, and then uh, trying to make most out of the opportunity that I had on hand. Uh, I think I also worked in quality at some point and mm -hmm. I also worked in human resources training. So I got like a well-rounded uh, experience mm -hmm. uh, in that transition, so to say. Indian experience has definitely taught you a lot and uh, I want to know like because I haven't worked any, any full time in India. So mm -hmm. you have worked both in India as well as US. So how can you compare like how's the work culture there versus in US and what are some of the differences that you faced? Um, I think uh, work culture is slightly different uh, for sure. Uh, I like the work culture more where I'm working currently. Uh, I currently work at um, Tesla and um, I, I also the roles are different. Um, uh, I think in, in like currently, uh, I think uh, I own some commodity yeah. uh, and uh, I think my calendar can be planned. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the key differences that I can spot in work cultures is there's a lot of phone being used in, um, in the Indian company that I worked or okay. maybe in a typical Indian setup. Um, that's not a thing in the US. Um, so I like that part. It gives you freedom to work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so uh, you you have some peace of mind. It's not a lot of phone calls that happen around. So you mean most of the you? communication is through email, you mean? 
Okay. Uh, most of the communication uh, internally can be uh, through some uh, like let's say uh, apps like Teams oh. or like some similar messaging apps, mm -hmm. uh, and there can be like meetings which are scheduled. Uh, mostly, uh, most of the time they're scheduled, and some are like ad hoc. Um, the organization is mostly flat uh, mm -hmm. in, in like U.S. companies, uh, like. Uh, not many people would even in higher in the order would have key bins. Oh. Um, so you would have your manager sitting Open next to you, yeah. your like directors or senior directors sitting next to you. They're very approachable. Mm -hmm. um, there are like no walls that separates them. So you know, like that creates uh, a good working environment. Mm -hmm. That's slightly different in um, I I think where I worked in like India. In India, yeah. Okay. So now you know that uh, working in US has some advantages, but when you were in India, you obviously didn't know about this. So, what was the trigger point for you when you decided to pursue your master's from some abroad countries like USA? What was your motivation or trigger point where you thought because you worked for three years? So, mm -hmm. how did you decide? I think I, I think I kind of thought of pursuing my master's when I was doing my bachelor's itself. Um, like it was mostly I want to do I want to specialize in uh, some field. And uh, Germany was very attractive uh, uh, option. Uh, uh, like some courses were really attracting me at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, I had this notion that Germany is like very good for mechanical engineering, and some courses um, I thought were like re would be really helpful for me. Yeah. So this is when uh, this idea was planted, and uh, uh, I, there was no like definite trigger point, but it was mostly like you know. Let's complete the bachelor's and let's get a master's degree so mm -hmm. that you know you get like uh, MS in some specialization, not to end in like the umbrella as a mechanical engineer. Ah. So you already that. added pre-planned. You said you decided it in bachelor's. Uh, bachelor's. I only? had I had that w as one of my options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I didn't have anything planned. Like my plan was to get my ma bachelor's done, get in some mm -hmm. job, do some internships or maybe business. Like I wasn't really sure, but mm -hmm. then COVID happened and. One of my friends almost convinced me why it's better to go abroad instead of India, like whether it's pay, the standard of living and the quality of life. So mm. to be really honest, like my primary motivation to come to the US was money, like earning huge money. And that was it. But good to know that you had had it planned out to pursue your master's. And one one question, like, as you said, like Germany is a two go country for automobile or mechanical engineer. So why did you come to US? Like the immigration is tough. It's very costly. So. Why did oh. you choose US over Germany? Um, I I did apply to Germany in one of the years, uh, and I wanted to get into like a TU university in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the universities that I landed in my first year of application, um, I didn't get the universities that I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to land at T TU, mm -hmm. and in the second year, so I thought it is good for me to look at. I thought it is good to be more core specific. Okay. Uh, course specific. That there country is, country. if you are trying to pursue your masters in some field, uh, let's go for the best university, no matter what the location is. I also learned through experience uh, of some of my friends at that point. Is okay. uh, I had a notion that masters in US is expensive, mm -hmm. way more expensive than it is in Germany, and um, that wasn't true. Is what I learned from my friends' experience. Like, mm -hmm. if you get scholarships, if you find like jobs, you can still balance it out. You don't have to go for a hefty loan at that oh. point. Um, so that was one of the biggest things. I think the financial part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the the second part of it was uh, U.S. Sorry, Germany courses are subsidized. Yeah. Uh, but most of the German courses are subsidized. Sub subsidized. At least at that point is what I found. Okay. If the course was um, not that expensive. It was either completely in German or half thought in German, and we learned German uh, only to you know survive in Germany, yeah. not to like uh, get education in German language. So that was one of the biggest things that I learned while applying or in the middle of the process. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh damn, like um, it's I've come too far to you know change the direction now. Um, but still, I was able to do that, and hence I applied both in US and Germany, and I. Happen to land uh, in like US automotive uh, course here. Yeah. All right. So you did your master's in automotive engineering from Clemson University, I believe it's in mm -hmm. South Carolina. So yep. can you tell more about the master's experience? Like, how is it to 
study in america living the american dream can you share some of your biggest learnings some drawbacks that you faced during your masters in us american dream ha huh? um uh, uh my masters experience uh, uh, i think really shaped me um uh in a really good way um i i started my masters uh, in august 2019 okay. uh and uh, as you said like uh, this is a university like clemson university uh, this was an automotive campus which was which was a satellite campus slightly away from the main campus uh in the city of greenville uh this is a nice like little town um there was lot of help initially to mm-hmm. be settled and to you know be comfortable initially uh from people around there um we lived uh, near campus um and uh, i think um, the whole learning experience was uh, quite industry focused there were different verticals uh to name a few power train um uh, autonomous uh manufacturing yeah the there were different like uh, area of uh, focus okay. uh, i was into uh, manufacturing for some point my major was um, automotive engineering and minor was into uh, manufacturing okay. in my masters i also pursued a lot of different courses like um uh i did some management courses as well i did some programming courses as well mm-hmm. the projects were very good um uh my course was like 42 credits minimum it had like okay. four courses a semester which was quite heavy quite heavy i think uh, as far as it was 30 semester 30 credits for in order to graduate 42 might definitely be a lot yeah it is like slightly higher um but yeah and uh, in the middle of my masters uh, covid um happened Oh so you faced both the pre covid as well as post covid yeah my one and a half semester was pre covid uh, and the semesters after that were like uh, post covid from summer uh, mostly i would say i i remember end of the spring the exam was announced which was online the courses went online mm-hmm. uh, and that is when i think covid was kicking in uh, at its peak uh, yeah uh, apart from it i think i i in order to support myself financially i was working initially at uh, panda express dining dining job i can i can yeah it was like an on campus job where i where i cooked some chow mein some dal mein and uh-huh. we served we also cleaned um, yeah that is what we did um later i happened to uh, find an research assistantship um and uh, i worked on a bmw project we were developing a smart glove for them mm-hmm. um and it was really exciting for the resources uh i think resources were uh, you could mostly get whatever you would ask as far as it is reasonable mm-hmm. and you could order as many things as you want to experiment and like you know make progress on the project so yeah. most of the universities i think focus a lot on research like so they give you all the resources it's about just being willing to learn and explore new ideas so i think it's the case for most of the universities in us yes providing that support yeah and experiencing that first hand was was really nice wow yeah can you recall some of the cultural shocks like i can think of some like uh the tissue papers here mean different than in india like if you go to some restaurants in india you ask for tissue papers but here they say it napkins so that's really embarrassing and second is the tipping system like i didn't know we had to uh, give tips to the waiters and all like back in india we don't so can you recall some of the cultural shocks you faced uh that's very cliche uh uh no i don't recall anything